Folks, how are you? Oh, it's Brian again in Denver, and he's doing these damn peak things again. <clears throat> Here we go. This guy's got the, he's got a bad for this stupid proof. Um, yeah, I wanted to go back. How are you doing? I hope you're all well. Thanks for joining me. I'm trying to make this quick. Got a lot of stuff to go through. Um, kind of revisiting this uh, shot that I did a video on about a month ago. And then I did another video where I used some photos from hikers, because this is an aerial shot. So, you know, we didn't know where our height of the observer was. Excuse me, but anyway, this is an aerial shot um, about 33 miles from Pikes Peak, 67 miles from Crestone Peak, uh, which we can see sitting up over top of Pikes here. So we're trying to get this fourth saline, you know, kind of uh, mountains of evidence type proof here going on. Um, and yeah, I don't know exactly where the observer height is. So we're, we're going to figure out, I figured out how high it has to be. And I actually emailed and contacted this photographer guy, the guy who took this picture. And uh, we went back and forth. He was a super nice guy. Um, and asked him about, you know, how do you know exactly where you were? Because he did, you know, say in the book, his book with this photo and on the website that it was at 14,000 feet, you know, even. But uh, anyway, so I wanted to get in contact with him and see if he had any documentation on exactly where he was, a flight log or something. And we went back and forth, and I'll talk about that. Um, and I did another video uh, where I, you know, yeah, I used some hikers um, photos from tops of peaks from top of Mount Snowmass and was making claims about, uh, I don't think we should be able to see this, and I don't think we should be able to see that. And somebody came along and said, well, let's, you know, prove it. Let's do the math and figure this out. And he was kind of a, you know, a skeptic, but really nice guy. And uh, so we went through and kind of used the Metabunk um, methodology that they used on that Mountain of Evidence, uh, the Blue Ridge Mountain video. Um, and we're dealing with, you know, s shorter um, distances in that video. And that's what, you know, I kind of like that video, and I think this is a really cool way to do it. And the guy who was actually, you know, kind of challenged me, and we went through all the math, was like, yeah, actually, this is, you know, this is a cool way to kind of, you know, observe and or map out curvature or no curvature, or what can we see or what shouldn't we be able to see, since we're kind of forcing the line between observer a midway point, or at this thing is like a third way of there, and then a final target forcing a line across three points. You know, do they line up or don't they? Is it on a ball or not? So, hopefully, you understand that by now. I just, I know, I just got a, I think a, a comment on this video that I did a month ago saying, well, you know, height of the observer, use the calculator, and we're trying to bypass that stupid calculator. So please don't tell me about the height of the observer calculator. I'll show you why we'll go through this, but <laughs> anyway, sorry about that. A little sensitive, got a lot of comments like that. But it's true, the height of the observer is very important. As I found out, you know, when we did the math on that last video um, from the shot from Snowmass Mountain looking out, and I'd done another video really quick because I thought I had found Evans Mountains, or Mount Evans, which was like a 100 mile shot, um, but I didn't, I hadn't found it. I was mistaken, and Rory, this guy, came back, and he checked it out and was like, nope, you, you, you blew it. That's not Mount Evans, and it wasn't after I went back and double-checked, so I had to pull the video down. So Rory's got two, and I've got zero so far. <laughs> so anyway, but, I mean, it was great because, it, you know, it kind of made me do this math and kind of figure out what you can see and what you shouldn't be able to see, and it's pretty amazing, even at really long distances, 60, 70 miles, you know, how... Um, how slight our angles of our viewing angles are. You know, we're talking about tenths of a degree, hundredths of a degree this way or that way. So it gets tricky. You need a really long, super tight line. And, uh, you know, I'm still going to be searching and maybe going for some hikes this summer and map some things out and take, take some of my own photographs um, from the ground where I know where I'm at um, and maybe do another one. But I kind of went back. I wanted to go back to this photo because it's pretty awesome the way we got Crestone here over Pikes. And this guy claimed it's at 14,000 feet. So yeah, so I, I emailed this guy. <clears throat> um, let me show you his book. You can download his book for free. Um, and uh, it's got like 600 aerial photographs in it. It's crazy. Um, so this is the photograph that we're looking at here. So he did this panorama 
of the front range um, and it says here on this photograph which was one of the only photographs in the book that actually he's where he says the altitude of where it was taken um, and he says in the book as well as on the website um, this view was made from an altitude of 14,000 feet five miles east of Larkspur Colorado so that's why I emailed him and said, you know, <clears throat> you know, I kind of said, I'm kind of studying how to triangulate the camera position and the 2D image and all this stuff. And I really like this photo. It's very challenging. <laughs> are you sure it's at 14,000 feet? You know, how sure are you and how do you know that? Um, so just take a look down here at our foreground. You know, this is Colorado Springs basically down this way and the Air Force Academy and things over here. But uh, an I-25 run along here. So I did some overlays. I took some of the photos and overlaid them onto Google Earth. Well, we'll take a look at that just for fun. I don't know what it proves or doesn't. But Rory, the guy who was commenting on the other uh, video, he was like, yeah, you know, lay those pictures on Google Earth and just you know, play with it and see what happens. So I did. That was kind of funny. Um, I don't know. It's kind of funky to try to lay a 2D image onto Especially from this perspective, you know, where you're not looking straight down at the ground or something. Um, but anyway, let me keep going here. Um, so yeah, I emailed this guy, this photographer, and, and he said, uh, so yeah, he came back to me and uh, he said, well, it's a really good guess. And he actually sent me this photograph and he cropped it right here and said, see how Crestone and Pikes Peak or, you know, how these peaks are all lined up with Pikes? We must be at like 14,000 feet, right? Because it's all lined up. <laughs> and it's funny how people never account for the curve, right? So it's like, yeah. And so I wrote him back and thank you for responding. And I was like, yeah, that's kind of the part of this picture I'm really interested in myself. And here's why. <laughs> because here's some curvature numbers. And, you know, Crestone Peak, I don't think should be able to be visible if you're at 14,000 feet or somewhere even with pikes. And Crestone should drop down. <clears throat> at 100 miles away, and you shouldn't be able to see it. And uh, I kind of gave him some numbers and the 8 inches per mile squared formula and stuff like that. And he came back and said, well, you know, I think the world's curved, but I don't know where you're getting this math, and, you know, 8 inches per mile squared doesn't seem right to me, you know, where are you getting that, and uh, all this stuff. And so he's like, I, I agree that maybe I am higher than 14, maybe 14.5 at the, at the most is what he said. And I said, okay, well, and then I sent him the, uh, you know, a copy of the curvature, you know, the chart that we've all seen a million times, um, the eight inches per mile squared, and said, yeah, you know, this is widely accepted within, you know, a couple hundred miles as being pretty accurate, accurate enough, um, and, you know, this is where my numbers are and the angles to the peaks from the observer if you were at 14.5 or whatever. I said, you know, even at 14.5, you shouldn't be able to see it. I think it's more like 15.5 or more, and it's actually more than that. What are you doing, Wesson? My dog's slinking in. Um, hey, what you got? Um, so, yeah, and he's like, oh, that's very interesting after I sent him the curvature math, and he kind of sent me back a diagram that he made and was like, yeah, we could figure that Pike's Peak goes up, right? And the other two, you know, kind of the hump theory versus the drop theory. And I wrote him back and said, yeah, that's another way to look at it. You know, things kind of work out the same. You either get angles that are positive or negative, you know, from point A to C. So point A is going to be us, our camera. Point B is Pike's Peak. Point C is uh, Crestone. And uh, so he's like, oh, that's interesting. So then, then he had a friend of his who's a, a mathematician draw, out, um, draw it up and figure it out what the height of the observer would have to be on the ball. And we'll, we'll talk about that and I'll show you that. And I was like, oh, that's cool. And I haven't written him back, um, even though his friend kind of fudged the numbers. <laughs> he took about, he's like Polish dude and he did it in kilometers, but he took about um, 50 kilometers off our total distance. He like totally lowballed the, the numbers on our distances and came up with 14,880 feet for our height of our camera here. Um, let's see here. Let's see if we can scroll through these guys. So this is our foreground shot. Um, this is I-25. This is all of that same photograph. He took the eight photos that he took of the panorama and then put them together and broke them up into 30 different frames on the high def thing. So you can choose between 30 different frames within those, that panorama shot all up and down the front range. Um, so this is the foreground of that. That's I-25, 
again, this is Colorado Springs Air Force Academy kind of area. Um, so just kind of think about that. We'll, we'll take a look at that. Um, here's some math that I did. Come on, buddy. Please move. Man, everything moves so slow. And this is the math his buddy did. Um, and we'll look at that. What do I want to do here? Let's go. Um, let's go. So anyway, let's give Rory some credit. This guy who um, on this uh, flat earth, Colorado is flat video. We got into this pretty long thread, which is really awesome. So he gives the link to the Metabunk debunked Blue Ridge Mountains impossible on spherical earth video. You can check that out. So we went back and forth. Um, and he was really cool. He did all this. Um, you know, I was trying to give him the exact coordinates of the photo. This is not the photo we're talking about in this video, but the previous one from Snowmass Mountain. Um, so he did all the math on what I was looking at, you know, looking at Mount Princeton and Yale over these ridges and all these things. So we get um, positive angles here on this stuff. Ridges are lower than our peaks. Um, but we can see more of the mountains than just the peaks, but it's kind of an issue of how much of those mountains should we be able to see in that photograph. But it's hard to do. Like I said, I, I went out and kind of looked at some stuff as far as like the lowest points on the horizon that we could see over ridges and peaks. And even then it gets tricky. I mean, you're, you know, hundreds of a degree this way or that way at certain distances. That's why we really got to stretch this out to like 80 to a hundred miles. Um, but it was really cool. Um, you know, please do check my figures if you're in agreement. I checked all his figures. Um, he says, wow, that's cool. Thanks a lot for doing that. Um, I kind of claim here that I've found Mount Evans over Crystal Peak, which I did not. He's like, wow, if you did find that, then that would be it. You, you nailed it. Um, but I didn't. <laughs> so we went back and forth about that, that video, and I basically said, yeah, I had to pull it down because you were right. Um, I blew it. It was close. It was really weird. I mean, it was like the mountains almost, the profiles and stuff looked exactly the same. But anyway, I blew it. So I said, yep, I pulled it down. You win again. Um, and he says, thanks for posting the comment. And for everything else, when I get a bit of time, we'll be looking at your original photo in greater detail and seeing exactly what it's telling us. The technique still works, and I believe it does. And so um, I think that's about how far John McIntyre was out of Anyway, sorry. So yeah, he says we should go back and look. So he was a super nice guy on that video. Check out that video. Check out these comments. Thanks, Rory, for holding my feet to the fire and making me not be so lazy because I was totally lazy. As in this video as well, because I just kind of guessed it. And I said, I don't know. I think the you know the plane has to be at least a thousand or at least two thousand feet higher to see Crestone Peak, but I didn't figure it out. Figure it out. So. Okay, back to this photographer and his friend, his Polish friend, who is a mathematician who did this. Can you see this? That's oh, a little too big, right? Pull that back a little bit. Sorry, come on. My computer is so slow. I apologize. So this is A is our camera. B is our um, Pikes Peak. C is Crestone. These lines are our radius of our ball, Earth, plus the altitude of the mountains. And so he's figuring out, you know, the cosine, the signs here, of these angles, and then using the ratio to find the length of A, right? Pretty cool way to do it. You can redo this yourself. It's a little different than how Rory and I were doing it. Please move. Ugh, I mean, it's just ridiculous. My computer is so bogged down. Sorry. So he's saying T is 30 kilometers. Please move which is camera to Pikes Peak, and Z is 80 kilometers, but he's off. I mean, he's way off. It's more like 52 kilometers here, and it's 107 kilometers from Pikes Peak to Crestone. I mean, you can just map that out. So he's lowballing these numbers, but you know, I'm not arguing the math at all. Um, this is all kind of in Polish, <laughs> but he's coming up with A as 4537 meters, which is, like I said, 14,880 feet for that length, um, as far as our height of the observer above mean sea level, right? Because we're doing this, this is all, all these altitudes on the peaks are measured above mean sea level, which follows a curve, you know, so it has to. Um, so that's what we're trying to figure out. Okay, please just move. 
computer. So there's that guy. So you can check that out and redo it that way if you want with different measurements. So let's go back. So here's my guy. Oh, come on. I mean, what? It's just a stupid sketch here, people. Um, I apologize. Please move. I don't know why it takes so long to move a picture. Um, <clears throat> so here's our deal. So this is how we do it. Um, the Metabunk way, which is we take our height of the observer, we take a horizontal line, a fictional horizontal line, 90 degrees to our radius, right? And then we measure our angles down with the drop to our targets. And then we're trying to get an angle where the, the observer is up to a height where the angle to the first obstruction, Pike's Peak, is lower than our angle to Crestone Peak. Um, if that makes sense. So, yeah, we've got our horizontal line, and then we these dotted lines represent, say, this is kind of a top here of our chart. Our 0.23 angled line was right here to the Pike's Peak, and then our 0 0.702 is our dotted angled line down through Pike's Peak to Crestone. So our angle to Crestone's bigger off of our, um, it's larger off of our horizontal tangent perpendicular to our observer than our angle to pikes, right? So we have to figure out how high we need to get this camera up to go from a negative to a positive to where our angle to pikes peak is greater than our angle to crestone, which is down here. And basically I needed to put it up to about 16,300 feet to get that to work. Um, so what we have here is we have um, our mileage and our distance in feet, 174,240 feet to Pikes Peak, um, 300,000, so 67 miles. So 100 miles, we did the total distance. I didn't write it on there, but it's, you know, 528,000 feet, right? 5280 times 100. Um, so that's for that distances. So that gives us our triangle leg. So we just use a, a triangle calculator and uh, punch in those numbers. And then this number here that we're calculating is our short side of the triangle, which we are trying to calculate the opposite angle from, which is over here. Correct? So we go camera minus the elevation of our peak plus the drop for curvature, our eight inches per mile squared drop. So here we got Pike's Peak at, you know, I started at the same as Pike's Peak, 14,110 feet. So we take off the altitude of Pike's Peak, which gives us zero, and then we add our drop, which is 726 feet per 33 miles, and that gives us that leg here of our triangle above. Um, Crestone Peak, we do the same. We take our camera, we subtract 149 or 294, which we end up still with a positive number, and then we take off another, or uh, sorry, negative number, and then we take off our, or we add our 6,666 feet for a 100 mile deal and we're at 6472 so that becomes this leg of our triangle, correct? So these gives us our angles if we put it, do that into a calculator. I put the 90 degree up top here, um, I don't know, I was like maybe I should have put it down here and that would kind of account for our tilt, you know, as our degree, our ball tilt of our radiuses, but I mean, the, the difference was so negligible. I tried it after I did all this, and it was like barely any difference in our angle, just like hundreds or thousands of a degree. So anyway, I left it like this. So this is how I did it. Um, cool, does that make sense? So if we raise our camera, then these numbers go up, right? So we go to 1516. If we go to 14900, which is kind of just rounding up of what uh, the math that uh, our guy did, um, our photographer's friend did, um, and even at that, we're negative almost three uh, tenths of a degree, and that's the thing. I mean, we're dealing with these really low numbers and degrees. It's pretty amazing. So it's been kind of a it's a good open eye opening experience to look at this because a lot of times, you know, there are a lot of videos or you know people say, well, look at that, you know, and as I did and say, looks flat to me. I say, well, is it flat? How flat is it? <laughs> Do the measurements and figure it out, and you know. It's a big ball. If we're on a ball, yeah, it's a big one. So it's pretty darn flat. But there is a curve. There has to be a curve. So let's measure it. 
So I put up here at 15.5, um, kind of my guess. Uh, I did some quick calculations. I was wrong about that. I was under underestimating, um, which we're still at negative, but we're getting closer. You can see our numbers here are getting closer. And so I was like, okay, well, finally got up to 16.3. I kind of kept adding and adding and adding until I finally got a positive number where our angle to pikes was greater than our angle to crestone. Makes sense? So that's how that is done. Um, we'll go back and look at that. But So here's our foreground of our photograph. Here's this guy. So I laid these on Google Earth. Let's go look at Google Earth real quick. Try to do this quickly. I know I hate Google Earth. <laughs> so this yellow line is our shot um, from our plane over Pikes Peak to Crestone peak way out here in the distance. That's what we're looking at, this line, this ridge line. I mean, in this photograph, he actually has state line peak marked, and it's 160 miles away, and you can see it. But interesting enough, um, there's nothing in the foreground that would stop you if we applied that same methodology that I just showed you in, that, in my scribbles um, to this. Actually, we still get a a positive number for something 160 miles away if we're at over 14,000 feet here. So, you know, just because you see something 160 miles away, yes, I, mean, I understand that height of the observer is important. Um, but if we force something, or force a line in between it, then, oh, come on, please. Uh, then we kind of force the line with our Pikes Peak in the middle of it. So if we had something, you know, a little taller or equal to the same height as state line peak out there right in the way, we could probably try to figure it out. But I did a quick calculation on it. And I was like, well, it actually, you know, like over this ridge here or something, it should still be visible on a ball from our height. So I get it. But please, please leave me alone about that damn calculator. So I put some pictures on here. Um, so we'll take a look. This is our foreground overlay down here, and this is our Pikes Peak overlay. I don't know what this kind of, oh, please, it's not going to work. I'm not going to, okay, thank you. My mouse is dying. I've been doing this too much. Navigating stupid Google Earth. Oh, please go down. So we're at 14.117 here, so this is pretty good. Okay. This is so nerve-wracking to try to get this done in a decent amount of time, so I appreciate you sticking with me. Oh, come on. Get info. We'll kind of fade this in and out. So I overlaid this photo. And it's hard to tell, so here's the photograph. And if we drop it back, I actually got pretty lucky <laughs> on getting this laid on here pretty... and sizing it, right? But you can see, you know, this face and these peaks in the in the foreground here and either side line up pretty good. I mean, things in the background here, kind of the, the two-dimensional photograph kind of lays down on top of Google Earth, and so you kind of lose some of the ridges and peaks directly behind Pike's Peak here, as far as from our angle, what we're looking at it here. Um, but we take it back to Google Earth, and we take it back in. So we're at 14171i elevation on Google Earth, looking at this. Please move. And we bring our photo back in. So it's kind of cool to, we got a snowy picture on top. And just kind of, all the little cracks and crevices actually line up pretty good. But again, I don't know. I mean, we're looking at this. There's some things where it just doesn't match up. So here we are at 23,000 feet. We are at 16, 15, sorry, um, 14, 6. 16.1. It's hard to say what this tells us. <laughs> um, but it was a cool exercise to do. Um, so it looks like things, I mean, we're definitely looking at things pretty uh, straight on, you know. So here's kind of our photograph. Let's get down here to more of an elevation closer to what we are. So here's our overlay of our foreground, our I-25. We're at 14.6 here, foreground. Get info. Um, let's bring this <coughs> in and out. So here's our Google Earth. 
Here's our photograph. Well, there's, you can see things moving. It's funny how. Um, so I was kind of concentrating on this I-25. Um, <clears throat> and these roads in and here, this interchange, trying to get it to line up. So our photograph, we kind of got our, our little lake down in here and our ravine and our ridges. Um, the streets are actually kind of different along here. It's kind of strange, but it could be a Mandela effect. <laughs> There's our photograph. And here's Google Earth from 14,911 feet is our eye altitude. I mean, you got to stretch these out and try to make everything match. So I think we're dealing with such a scale here that if you really try to use the photograph to kind of figure it out where we are, um, I think it would be a technical question that would be pretty involved. Um, and I kind of looked up some things about how to do that, and it is pretty involved. Focal lengths and all the kinds of things. So somebody else could do that. But anyway, it was fun to kind of mess with it. Uh, so let's get out of Google Earth. All right? Please. So yeah, come on. Um, so essentially, here we are at 14.4. It's kind of our photograph. So you can kind of see that angle, what it looks like on the Google Earth issue, um, and then what it looks like from our photograph, full photograph. I mean, it looks lower. I mean, you look like you're looking more at a 90 degree angle towards Pikes Peak and these faces of these ridges and everything's pretty flat. You know, to me, it looks like he's at 14,000 feet or so. But maybe somebody out there who's a pilot might have a better inkling. So anyway, this isn't about proving because we just don't know. Like I said, he said it's a good guess because we're all lined up. Then I said, you um, are assuming the world is flat. <laughs> um, so this is our foreground again. Let's go to our guy here. So yeah, bum, ba, da. I could show you this whole, um, oh man, this thing is running long. So that's, that's the math I did. Somebody just left me a comment saying, why don't you show me your math, dummy? And, you know, of course, about the height of the observer. If you're at 14,000 feet, then there's no reason you can't see 100 miles. And it's like, yeah, as long as there's not something in front of you, that's also 14,000 feet. Um, and that's the whole point to this. So here's the panorama, his website. So go check this out. For $40, you can get this whole panorama, high def. I think I'm going to buy it from him. He's a super nice guy. Uh, he, you know, maybe I got him thinking and scratching his head, but you can see how this is eight photos turned into 30 different panels. Um, this is our foreground. So this is that whole shot we're looking at. Um, so yeah, I'll show you actually. So this is State Line Peak. That's the one that's 160 miles away, supposedly. Um, yeah, and there's a ridge right there. I mean, I actually did actually kind of measured out to that ridge and to State Line, and it's funny. Yeah, it's not that you shouldn't be able to see State Line Peak at least the very top of it. It's kind of how much of it should we see? But that's a 3.2 mile drop at at 160 miles. So anyway, so here's that whole panorama shot. Pretty cool. Let's take that down. Let's go back to here and let's end this thing. I appreciate you sticking with me. I finally wanted to do this math. This one's for you, Rory, and everyone else who ran, ran, ran. <laughs> do you see what we're doing here? I hope this makes sense. It finally made sense to me. Um, and so I did all this math. And yeah, it's tough to... This is not easy because we're dealing with very small angles, degrees here. <clears throat> Fractions of degrees even at 100 miles. But, like I said, I came up with 16,300 in order to get to our positive number, our height of the observer, to see over Peg's Peak and get Crestone above it. So let me know what you think. I appreciate you sticking with me. <sighs> Finally did some math on this, and hopefully that'll satisfy some people. I'm not saying that the photo is a proof, because we don't know. You know, like I said, I contacted the photographer and he said it's a good guess and he didn't come up with any, um, you know, he gave us his buddy's um, math here, which you can check out and do it this way. It's a pretty cool way to do it. Um, but like I said, he totally lowballed those numbers. So, you know, 
please move. Okay, I got to... I really appreciate you sticking with me. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Please, computer. Just go. Just go back. <laughs> La -da -da. Oh, computers. Got to love them. Saturday morning, having coffee. Thanks for sticking with me. Let me know what you think. I gave you some numbers on this thing. So he says it was at 14.5, 14.8. I say it has to be at 16.3, another 2,000 miles, which was kind of what I guessed in the original video, but I didn't actually run the numbers. So here we do. I ran the numbers for you. Let me know what you think. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Peace.